Hey everybody and welcome back. My name is Tsuki and this is Oxygen Not Included. Um, okay, just a little bit of an FYI before we get started. This is going to be the second last episode that I record for the year. Uh, I will be recording one more on Friday and then I'm taking a break until 2020. Xmas time and all that unfortunately gets in the way. So... Uh, Without further ado, let's continue. So a bunch of things happened. I finally, um, my dupes somehow managed to find some Slickster eggs. And they've been happily like multiplying because I gave these power. So I'm, I don't know how much room they take up. This guy's glum because he hasn't been uh, petted recently. But this one is happy. Ah, here he comes. Look at this. It's the cutest thing ever. He just kind of flops up. <laughs> it's the cutest thing ever. Uh. After this guy pops up, I'm going to cut the power because I don't want the, the population to increase too quickly. But yeah, I happen to find a single Slickster egg down here from that slickster that was drifting around. Um, you'll notice I filled in these areas. That's just to push the oil up towards the pump. Then I started building a little tap for my oil reservoir that was up here. Now this thing is an oil well. Um, what you basically do, this is fracking as far as I know. But you're, f no, is it? I don't know, um, but you're pumping like water into this oil well at the back this oil reservoir and uh, that water is then forcing the oil upwards as far as i believe now i built it this like in this enclosure because eventually this oil is going to fill up and create the seal here and the purpose of this thing is you'll notice that there's a little bar or line up here as this oil well is used or you know pumps oil it builds up back pressure of, I think, natural gas. I'm not 100% sure. Um, and when it reaches 75%, the duplicate's going to come over here and he's going to yank this little chain, which is going to vent that natural gas outwards. And I then want to have this thing basically just sit here and uh, I will eventually like run a gas pipe all the way up here. To these natural gas generators or you know what i'm probably just going to build one here just to burn that gas off and then generate power while i'm at it i think that's a good idea i replaced this floor with mesh tiles because i was getting fed up with the freaking water laying everywhere i'm probably going to do the rest uh, the same with the rest um the water was getting like dangerously close towards the top here but after I started building the pipe down here towards this side, um, this has kind of picked up again. And I, I believe that that is primarily because there was like a polluted water bubble sitting somewhere. Um, so this picked up and then this filled with salt water. That reminds me, I should actually... Uh, this polluted water will eventually run out as we get this. So I need to set up a little bit of a safety system. Just so we start using that as well. It sounds so funny when you listen to it in slow motion. This is slow motion even though it's like slow, it's normal speed, whatever. Um, but yeah, what else? Oh, right. Um, oh, okay, good. So I can cut this. Schnip. All right. Uh, that means these will just go at normal speed. Look at the baby. He's the freaking cutest thing ever. So these guys suck up carbon dioxide and they spit out crude oil. Eventually, when this gets to a level that I'm, you know, concerned enough, I'll put in a pump here and have it pump into the liquid reservoir. Hm. 
Now that the game is a slower speed, I'm starting to notice things like this. I'm going to put in a second thermal aqua tuner. And that one, I'm going to have like a liquid pipe running through like a part of my base. Because I want to start, I want to not start, but I want to I wanna experiment a little bit with these. Uh, with like the hot tub. I want to start experimenting with that. But I need wood for that. Do I have an arbor tree? I do. We can plant one of those. We just need a little bit of wood. And yeah, this guy needs a little bit of specific heat range. And that's fine. This area is cool enough. Okay, but anyway, um, our food is looking fine. It's steadily climbing upwards. Oxygen is not included, but it looks fine. And we have so much water. We have so much water. At one point, the water reached to this point where it started like pushing over the edge. And that just flooded this entire system down here. And I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to put in a proper water seal. Um, not that you know, Mickey Mouse, you know, this one. And then I realized I can play, you know, that um, polluted water slash normal water trick that I pushed here. I can do that here to form a better seal. <coughs> um, on top of that, I finished all this construction. Look at this. I can just turn this on. You know. Whatever. What? And then just start pumping more water, but we don't need more water. So, no, turn off. There goes that little bit of water. This I pump straight down here. But we so just don't need it. Um, oh, by the way, where's this gas coming from? I should actually have this. What, what do you guys spit out? Carbon dioxide, huh? I should have you spit that out, like, over here. Where my... Where my little slicksters can digest it. But that's okay. That's a worry for another time. If it ever gets, ever gets to the point that these slicksters use up all the carbon dioxide, I can start, you know, gassing some of it back. I, I, I don't care. Okay, but the important thing, we got to space last time. So I set up a nice little, very, very simplistic, just a single generator with a battery to power a transit tube access point for our duplicates to get back. So that they don't have to, you know, run if they want to come back here again. And that also reminds me, I have to, I have to make this a little better. They need to be two from the floor, so... There. Let's just make that a higher priority. Good. Okay, so now they can, when they come back, they can just take the transit tube. They used to pop out here, I guess. But that's fine. So, and the other big thing is I accessed space. And I build a big old ladder up to, look at that, the top of the world. And this just goes on until you reach the edge of the map. Um, however, unfortunately, there were some meteor showers, which then immediately broke down my ladders, and that caused a little bit of a nightmare. Um, but yeah, uh, these bunker doors, they are infinitely powerful, it seems. Because they can literally just withstand the freaking damage from, from the meteor impacts and you'll be fine. And the meteors come straight down. So all my ladders and things underneath these are protected. And while digging outwards towards the sides, I came across this. This and uh, also one of the notes... Uh, log entries, journals. Investigations, my logs. 
Surface breach. There you go. Um, if you pause the video and read through this, um, you'll come to the conclusion that as we continue the game speed, there's a big old planet that keeps circling by here. But that article talks about the planet that we were supposed to go to is damaged in the background. Oh. Yeah, here comes a meteor storm. So that like kind of breaks blocks and uh, it also dis deposits regolith. Oh, here comes the planet. So, you'll see that that planet is big damaged. And there's also a bit of a bug. If you zoom out like this, pause the game, it stays where it is. <laughs> you can zoom in on it. <laughs> I'm sure that's not intended. <coughs> So yeah, uh, it seems the story was that we were supposed to teleport onto the coordinates of this planet or onto this planet, but then something happened that blew this freaking thing off. It's probably to do with these assholes, these gravitas people. Um, yes, uh, so they probably did something which then cause the planet to blow out or get destroyed or whatever and then one of these chunks that are floating around in space is this asteroid um, which we then teleported into because we probably set some specific coordinates for a sensor that was on or maybe because this printing pod was stationed in the chunk that flew off or something of that of that nature so yeah and there it goes back again Also, it's hilarious, because if your duplicates run around outside here too much, they get sunburnt. But if you look at the lo level of lumens, it's like 30,000, because it's basically almost night. Literally 30,000, 30,000. Zero. <laughs> Sunlight? Pitch black. That's just the funniest thing ever. That's not how you physics, but you know what, whatever. So these, I noticed, are like dumping a lot of like ore on the surface, which could be useful. Not sure. But I kind of want to dig my way down to have a look at this facility. Okay, let's have a look at what's going on here and hopefully our duplicates don't get too sick from being outside this long. Guys, do something. Don't just stand there. So yeah, the lumens go up to like... Jeez, look at that. It's crazy. It's 60... Th it even, it's getting even higher. That's 70,000 lux. 75. It's going to like reach 80, I think. And then immediately start going down. Yes. It reached 80 and now it's going back down again. And these guys get sunburned because of it. Like that, there's one that's sunburned. Okay, you. I'm gonna ask you to move in here. I wanna see what's in here. So, I inspected this, and this is basically just a blueprint for one of these thermo uh, thermo neutralizers. Which is. Have we seen one of them? 
I have a feeling we haven't seen one of those in one of in this playthrough yet. Huh. I did expect us to have been through a cold biome. Far enough for us to have seen that. But anyway, there's a device that looks like this. That you pump hydrogen into and it cools the area around it. Meh. Big meh. Ooh. Okay. What's this? Oh, this is the printing pod. Let's inspect this. Printing pod promo. Introducing the latest in 3D printing technology. The Gravitas Home Printing Pod. Bioorganic production capabilities to your old home printers. Dinner frustration, simply select the pre Okay, and voila, delicious pot roast ready in only 0.87 seconds. Hmm. Interesting, and this? This is a mining gun. Bring your mining operations into the 23rd century with new gravitas personal excavators. Improved particle condensers reduce raw volume for more efficient product shipping. And that's good for your bottom line. License for industrial use only, resale, uh, yeah, sure. Oh, this is just more office table nonsense. All of that is one thing, huh? Okay. Hey, just keep moving, please. Can you somehow get in here? No? Oh, broken elevator. Oh, so you can't actually get into this building unless you, like, deconstruct the walls or something. And I do believe that that is just the other side of the asteroid over there. Yeah, it's over here. If you look at it gets red the moment I get my mouse over here. Same as this side probably. Yep. So yeah, the edge is like over here. Okay. Um the buttons inside indicate it went down more than a dozen floors at one point. Oh. Okay, well, what's this? New cloid article. Incredible technology. Uh, harnesses time into energy. What? Incredible technology from independent lab harnesses time into energy. Scientists from the recently found gravitas have unveiled their first technology prototype dubbed the Temporal Bow, a device which manipulates the fourth dimension to generate infinite clean and renewable energy. While it may sound like something from science fiction, facility founder Dr. Jacqueline Stern confirms that it is very much real. It has already been demonstrated that Newton's second law of motion can be violated by negative mass superfluids. That is just a mumbo jumbo sentence that means nothing. If the laws of motion can be bent and altered, why not the laws of thermodynamics? The temporal bow works by rapidly vibrating sections of the fourth dimension to send forward and backwards in time, generating massive amounts of energy with no waste. How? The fantastic thing about using the fourth dimension as fuel is that it's really categorically infinite. For those eagerly awaiting the prospect of human time travel, don't get your hopes up just yet. The facility says that although we have successfully transferred the technology, the technology was expressly developed for the purpose of generation and equipped for human transportation. Huh. Students at the Elian University of Science Technology held an uncommercial party this weekend. While their peers have been out until the wee hours is wearing lampshades on their heads and throwing high pros and sleeping colors. Oh, themselves. The two prospective STEM students who study theoretical physics with a focus on the work on space time. Uh, I know you guys don't want to sit and watch me read this. The future cells could travel back in time to keep them the proper run in the existence of time travel. They weren't in consideration of their future busy schedules, though, should you know, all reality. They, they were encouraged to send back a message using the code word hourglass to communicate that while they certainly wanted to come, 
They were simply unable. Sadly, no one RSP arrived at the party, but that did not dishearten them. Hmm. Certification of plant. Oh. Oh, was this his office or their office? A painting for a copse of tree, fir trees moving around the range on the horizon. The air in the room prickles with the sensation that I'm not meant to be here. What does that mean? Made that of granite, huh? The air in the room prickles with the sensation that I'm not meant to be here. What does that mean? I'm not entirely certain what that means. But okay. So that was a little bit of a lore bite for this... I guess. Hmm. Yeah, sorry that you guys are now all sunburnt. What does that mean? Oh, just more stress. Ah! Just, yeah, just buzz your way up. Really? Really, you have to stop to feel bad? Oh, they can actually just come here. Well, then, never mind. Oh, we have a printing for that. Yeah, sure. Okay, as soon as this guy is ready. Oh, yeah, I wanted to talk about that. The funny thing about this hot tub is that it requires a specific temperature of liquid. So, the liquid that you pump into the hot tub, it's liquid intake and liquid outtake. So... It needs 100 kilograms of water, and the minimum water temperature is 37.7. If the water gets to cold, the hot tub will drain and require a filling with water. However, the hot tub overheats at 37.7. And this just confuses the ever-loving crap out of me. So, how hot can this water be? Can it be, like... 60 degrees? Can it be like 92 degrees? <laughs> Hopefully not 92 degrees, that's a bit much. But I want to set up a loop with another one of these on that side this time. Uh, and I want to then just basically like, how big can a recreation room be? 96 probably, yes. So that means... Literally this. So... Mm, what am I going to do? Um, just put in a door there, I guess. I should... How much? Uh, we don't have enough. I should, like, make window tiles for all of these. And then just completely blast these two floors with statues. Mm, furniture. It is furniture, yeah. Mm. 
they move through this area a lot and I feel that just placing even more beautification in and around these areas will I already said that that's something I want to do is just completely bombard this entire place with beautification because we need that in order to keep their their moods up Let's keep this to seven as well. I assume they need the they have the same space requirements. They're honestly not producing a lot of it. That's okay. Okay, so what why is everything so laggy? Okay, so you'll see that there's some natural gas there already. And this thing hasn't even f filled up yet. <laughs> Is it worth it? I don't know. I honestly don't know. But we don't have much in the way of oil left, so I'm probably actually going to grab a copy of you and just open up into this little oil pocket because heck knows we need more oil I'm probably going to do the same up here should add at least a little bit of oil. Uh, sorry, I just sit up. Oh, we have another one of these. Okay, I wonder how long this is gonna last before everything breaks. Hey, another one of you. Slick stairs. That is petroleum. Which indicates to me that this oil... Oh, there's some sour gas as well. Which means that this has gotten way too hot. Stay away. This oil is still sub-100 and this is sub-100. Which is fine. That's what we want. Also, this... This, this process of... This process... I've been wondering if there isn't a way, because I've noticed that you can use heat to boil, you know, oil or crude oil, into petrol. You know, as you can see down here, there's petroleum there. So, because it came into contact with the heat. So, I am wondering, is there a way for us... I mean, there probably is. I'll just have to figure out how the hell we're going to do that. Heating up. Mm, we could do something with one of these. Huh. I'll have to start wondering about that. All oh, right. I also want to create a lot more steel. I guess for now I'll just have a yeah, let's and just have like a freaking where is it? Natural gas. Mm, ventilation.
that you can literally just spit out right where you are. Literally just spit out right there. Get this construction going a little bit higher priority. Let's get this done. What's the what's the kilograms there? So So if it's above a thousand, I say. That one. There you go. Then turn that on. It'll pretty soon get to the point where this fills up. Then, let's just change the coolest of colors. Um, is it just me or are my, these making really weird like rainbow colors? It's really just me. Or is it something that the, the temperature is doing? Because this side it doesn't do it. Weird. Okay. Um... It must be exposed to space, so... Oh yeah, we've got rocketries, by the way. A gantry... A... Ooh, this thing's big. Steam engine. Command cap capsule. And they also all call... G2000. This all costs steel, so I should be making tons of steel. Um, I believe it's a station. Virtual planetarium. Conducts interstellar research using data from telescopes and research modules. There's a big old fat one. This telescope is also a big old fat one. And they obviously need power. 120 watts. Conducts uh, assigning duplicates. Okay. Okay, duplicate. Th th that's all it needs. Data bank, one unit per research point. This needs a gas intake pipe? What? This one just says this building must be exposed to space. Fine. So I can place that here. Can put it as low as is necessary. Just slap some freaking granite under it or whatever. And then we'll see what we can do with that. Star map. Build a telescope to unlock this menu. So let's have a look at that. There you go. So what is this? Ooh, I've never seen this. Holy crap. This is cool. This is the first time I've ever actually seen this. Rockets allow you to visit nearby celestial bodies. Each rocket must have a command module, an engine, and fuel. You can also carry other modules that allow you to gather specific resources from the places you visit. Remember, the more weight a rocket has, the more limited it'll be in the distance it can travel. You can add more fuel to fix that, but fuel will add weight as well. Yeah, called wet weight versus dry weight. Okay, okay, okay. What gas do you... 
Oxygen. No line of sight. So what does this mean? This building has no view of space. Just look behind you. Should it be able to, like, draw a line between it and the outside? I'm confused. Okay. So I guess we can open these. But I'm afraid that opening that is going to let that regolith just fall onto it, which is not ideal. Um, select an unknown destination from the star map to begin analysis. And it needs a power wire. And oxygen. Is it so that whatever duplicant is in there can breathe? But can't they just enter it in their suits? You hear me? You feel me? Yeah, I'm obviously just going to run some power from this up there. Um, what, uh, you don't need a lot of power. Yeah, 120. I'm going to use good old classic technology. Actually, these guys need... Whoa, 120 what? That's crazy. And I can't run heavy one to it. Mm. So... This is limited to 1,000 watt. This is 4 kilowatt. You know what? Whatever. So let's run you up there and then we can run lead up to this guy. I guess these guys I can open manually. This is all experimentation at this point. Brian. Oh, and I'm curious because I don't know if you've noticed, but these research guys has an extra research point to it, which is called interstellar research. This is solid fuel cargo bay. Petroleum, liquid fuel, solid oxidizer, gas cargo canister, liquid cargo tank, biological cargo bay, sightseeing module, <laughs> hydrogen engine, liquid oxidizer tank, liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen, oxalite. Oh, that reminds me. Um, we have to set up... A section for the molecular forge. But space is already so freaking limited. Actually, no. There's plenty of space up here. This is one of the, the refinement stations that I have. Um, or, uh, yeah, it should be here, right? Is it a station? Is it a utility? Not furniture. Shout in the comments if you see it. Ha ha ha. I have all the research. Like, oh, of course, the molecular forge is the one I don't have. <sighs> Do 
Get to it. Oh, Legion Beast. He's probably asleep. Yeah, there he is. Needs water, and he's gonna go fetch his own water. Good. So the molecular forge, I believe, will allow us to make oxalite out of undetermined items. Hmm. But yeah. We will continue exploring space and having this set up uh, then in the next episode. So guys, I appreciate a like and a comment. I would appreciate it even more if you would tap the sub button. To be notified of when I... Let's see, is this stuff done here when I upload again? What? I mean, the only thing that should be going in this pipe... What's this? Carbon dioxide, really? There's a lot of carbon dioxide. Hmm. Which is okay, I guess. The system has to get... This has to get full. Oh, there you go. There it starts cleaning up. So that's good. Okay, so that means that this area will be able to slowly but surely fill up. There's still some carbon dioxide, but whatever. That'll eventually go away. Okay, but anyway, thank you guys for hanging out, and I'll see all of you in the next one. Bye-bye for now.